Good morning. Welcome to worship at Overbrook Presbyterian Church, where our mission is to love God, love our neighbors, and love each other. Let's continue in worship with our prelude. Would you please join me in our call to worship? Brothers and sisters, we are loved by God and chosen by the Lord Jesus. We are approved by God and entrusted with his gospel. Our hope and our joy is to glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes. As we worship together, may the Lord make our love increase. May we focus on him and be a blessing to everyone around us. Please stand as you're able and join us for our hymn of praise. Savior has ransomed me 
And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be I'm at an age where when things come into my mind, I need to say them before they disappear and are forever gone. So I just, even though it's time for our prayer of confession, I just want to let folks know, because you might not even be able to see it from where you're seated, but the pickle jar is on the floor beside the pedestal that has the offering plate on it because we needed our other pedestal for our remembering of the saints and the lighting of the candle. So one, I didn't want you, instead of paying attention to the worship service, to be thinking, where's that pickle jar? I wonder why there's no pickle jar. What has somebody done with the pickle jar? And two, I didn't want me to forget to say something about it, but it's right down there. And it's just there for this Sunday so that we can um, appropriately remember the saints. At this time, I would like to invite you to please join me in our prayer of confession because God promises us that if we are faithful to confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive. And just like it can be easy to get distracted in worship by things like where is the pickle jar. We also can come to worship with that heavy burden of our sins. And we can just focus on that and sort of miss the whole rest of worship. So I love that we have our prayer of confession near the beginning of the service so we can acknowledge that sin, confess that sin, know that it is forgiven and continue in our service of worship with a clean mind and a clean heart. Let us pray. Forgive us, O oh God, cleanse our hearts and minds of all that prevents us from loving you and loving our neighbor. 
May our lives be marked by faith, active in love, as we watch and wait for your return. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel. The mercies of the Lord are from everlasting to everlasting. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 2a. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. At this time, I'd like to invite Kelly Matson to come forward for our remembering the saints. Good morning. This weekend, which is always the first weekend after Halloween, we have All Saints Day. And this is the time where we take time to remember and give thanks to those of us, our loved ones that have gone before since last November. We pause to recognize their presence as part of our earthly congregation and rejoice that they have joined God's congregation in heaven. This year, we recognize Dale Forrest. He died July 21st, 2021, joined Overbrook December 3rd, 1961, and I know that he celebrated his 90th birthday in grand fashion in the parlor. I remember that day. Dale served as an elder, a deacon, and a trustee. We also give thanks for those friends and loved ones and former members with ties to Overbrook who passed since November 1, 2020. And they are being run separately up here oh my okay we thought they were um well i'll mention them very briefly then just by name betty luck don matson cloyce stanley dot west tom tendall tim schwartz sam butcher audrey parton mary ayers mel burton Butch Harlow, Gary Martin Sr., Sally Robertson, Opie Heiser, Lynette Gilgius, Bob Caudill, Brad Husted, Louise Comper, Joy, Joe Browning, sorry, Joe Browning, Danny Campbell, and Melvin Spivey. pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for the lives and service of these, your departed saints. 
We hold them dear to our hearts today and always. Please be with the families of those who have lost their loved ones and give them peace and joy in the knowledge that they will spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Young disciples. <laughs> you, you're all spread out today from, from the east, as far as the east is from the west. That's all right. Um, this coming Thursday is Veterans Day. Does, do any of you know what a veteran is? Mark? A person, Mark said, a person who serves in the army. It can be a person that has served in any branch of the military. Um, but yes, that's right. And so this coming Thursday, we say thank you to those who have served in the military. And if you're with us today and you are a veteran, if you would please either stand or if you can't stand, raise your hand that we might take a moment to say thank you. Thank you. Now, today's scripture says in the last days, there will be people who are lovers of themselves. Now, what that means is that in the last days, there'll be a lot of people who just are thinking about themselves as the most important person they know. Cecil, let me ask you a question. Which branch of the military did you serve in? The army, okay. When you joined the army, did someone come to you and say, good morning, Cecil, we're getting your uniform ready. What color would you like your uniform? <laughs> they didn't. No, what color was your uniform? Green. Who chose that? They did, okay. Now, When you joined, which branch of the service did you join or serve in? Yes. The Air Force. Okay. When you were in basic training in the Air Force, did someone come to you and say, what time shall we wake you up in the morning? <laughs> no, they didn't ask that. Who decided that? They did. They did. Wow. You know, it, it just struck me, young disciples, that Veterans Day and this idea of being lovers of oneself might have something in common because where it says um, people will be lovers of themselves, it's saying that is not a good thing. And elsewhere in Scripture, Jesus actually says, if you want to follow him or be his disciple, you actually need to deny yourself, which is kind of the opposite of loving yourself. And so everybody here who served in the military, they had to make a choice to deny themselves. They didn't get to say, oh, well, my favorite color is... Um, sunset pink so I would like my uniform in sunset pink even though Cecil may have really wanted that may have I'm not saying he did but whatever color he would have chosen he had to deny that and accept what was better for the greater good even though certain People might have like wanted to get up at a certain time or go to bed at a certain time, or maybe they would have not wanted to go marching when it was cold and rainy outside. 
That might have been what they wanted, but as a part of the military, you have to deny yourself. You have to set aside your wishes and wants and desires and instead do what is better for the greater good. And here in 2 Timothy, that's what he's saying, like this self-love isn't good. And to be a disciple of Jesus, to follow Jesus, means we have to put aside sometimes what we want and what we like and instead follow Jesus. The Bible is God's word to us, and it has all sorts of instructions about how we're to live our lives and how we're to tell the truth instead of lie, how we're supposed to do for other people, how we're supposed to think of other people better than ourselves. And it never says in there, do that if you like it or if it's what you would have chosen anyway. It says, lay down your life, deny yourself, and pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for loving us enough to give us the path to true happiness, to true fulfillment. Thank you for loving us enough to tell us the truth that we don't get there by seeking ourselves but rather we get there by seeking you and putting you first. In this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Would you please join me in affirming what we believe by joining together in the Apostles' Creed, standing as you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. remember when I was a lot younger than I am now and uh, we would go on vacation as a family. If we would go, uh, we went up into the mountains of North Carolina a lot um, when I was growing up on vacation to help um, with a project similar to Habitat for Humanity. And as we would drive through the mountains, being folks who were from flatland in the Piedmont of North Carolina, sometimes we'd just pull off the road and just look at the mountains, just how beautiful they are, they were, they are. And then after a while, after we'd had some time to soak it in, we'd get back in the car and drive on. You know what I've noticed has changed now in that very similar situation? Guess pretty much what most people would do today in that situation. They would pull off the road and they'd take out their phone and they'd take a picture of themselves. Isn't that, doesn't that seem a little odd? Like here is this glorious, majesty of God's creation and we've come to a point now where the typical response is oh look at that 
I should take a picture of myself. And so we'll get, uh, you know, let, we open up our camera on our phone and then we get situated so we can get a really, it's my hair, of course my hair looks good. And, <laughs> and, and then we take the picture and then we show that to people later on. They're like, oh, that's such a good picture of you. What's that blurry thing in the background? Oh, that's just some mountains or something. I, I don't really know. But, you know, e even sharing vacation photos has, has really become more an act of you looking at about 150 pictures of me with, oh, yeah, that thing, that the Grand Canyon or something. I don't know. But, you know, just, just look, at my, look at the way the sunset just highlighted my eyes and that picture isn't you know it, that's weird you know that seems so weird and and I heard Francis Chan a, a, a very famous pastor say you know we used to call that type of thing narcissism now we just call it Facebook <laughs> and it's normal and hey I have a Facebook page but I mean what is Facebook what are most people's Facebook pages about themselves pictures of them food they eat them eating food in restaurants it's all about us it's all about me and it's just becoming more and more normal and acceptable i mean if you're here today and you don't have a facebook page Something's weird. Something's wrong with you. I mean, you know, if you tell people you don't have a Facebook page, I know you know those looks they give you. And you could go to their Facebook page and find a picture of what they looked like when you told them you didn't have a Facebook page, probably. Because that's just how it is. But here in, in this passage, we're being told it says terrible things will happen in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. David in Psalm 27 says this, and he's talking to God and he's saying, I'm going to ask you for something, God, but I'm only going to ask you for one thing. If I could only ask you for one thing, this is what it would be. And in Psalm 27, starting in verse 4, he says this, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. David said, you know, that's what I want. That's what would fill me up. That's what would give me joy and a sense of fulfillment. Not to look at myself, not to see myself, but to spend an eternity focused on the Lord. You know, that's what worship is really supposed to be about, isn't it? About God and giving God glory and worshiping God. I'm not just talking about churches I've served, but talking about other churches and talking to other pastors who serve multiple churches. Almost every time somebody announces that they're leaving a church, what do they say? I don't like fill in the blank. <laughs> oh, I didn't like at blank blank church so I left I've always wanted to say what's it what's it got to do with you who said church was about what you like I wish people would say I left that church because I didn't feel like worship was really focused on glorifying God 
instead of I didn't like that music or I didn't like what the pastor said that day. It kind of made me uncomfortable, kind of step. He's, as my dad used to say, he stopped preaching and started meddling. <laughs> I heard about this pastor. In fact, I met this pastor. He was a pastor of a church and he was feeling called by God to have the church kind of make some changes. And guess what? People don't like change. And church people don't like change. And most times pastors don't like change. But God had really put something on this pastor's heart and he, he really saw the need for change in his church and part of the change that he was feeling led to, to introduce into the church was some contemporary worship music. And he just did not think it was going to go over well at his church. Because he was sure a lot of people would not like it. And isn't church supposed to be all about what we like? So he asked a friend of his who was a pastor who had made some changes like that if he could come visit his church and so he did and the two pastors were talking ahead of the worship service and the pastor whose church he was visiting said look if you get a chance after worship there's this one lady that i'd really like you to speak to before you leave and he told her her name and he said, fine, I'd love to talk to her, but why am I going to talk to this woman? And he said, well, she's the president of the Cotton Ball Club here at our church. And he's like, what is the Cotton Ball Club? And he said, that's what I want you to ask her. <laughs> After worship, I want you to ask her about the Cotton Ball Club. So they went and had worship and there was some contemporary worship in it. And he had the pastor had pointed out the lady who he had told him to talk to, and he saw her there with her hands raised during the praise music and swaying back and forth and stuff. And so after the worship service, he walked up to her and said, if you, if you could just give me a moment of your time, I am dying to know what the Cotton Ball Club is. And you know what she said? What? What did you say? And she pulled two cotton balls out of her ears. And he said, what is the cotton ball club? And she said, well, you see, I can't stand contemporary worship music. I just can't stand it. And if I put these cotton balls in my ears, I can't hear it. I don't have to listen to it. And he said, but why don't you just go to another church? She said, because I've noticed that in the service with this new music, more people are coming, which means more people are hearing the gospel, which means more people are coming to know the Lord as their savior. And she said, that brings God glory. And I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of glorifying God. So I found with these cotton balls, I can do both. And when other people in the church come to me, because I'm one of the ones that's been here the longest, and says, I'm thinking about leaving. I just can't stand that music. I invite them to join the cotton ball club. You know, because it's supposed to be about glorifying God. It's not supposed to be about what I like or you like or anybody else likes. In fact, Philippians 2 verse 3 says, Do nothing out of selfless ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but instead to the interest of others. 
Now, I said at the beginning, isn't it interesting the way things have changed and referred to cell phones and cameras and taking selfies? But you know what? I'm going to contradict myself because honestly, I'm not sure anything has changed since the very beginning. In fact, I would argue that the very first selfie is in the Bible. And not only in the Bible, but is in the first book of the Bible, in Genesis. So I'm going to read Genesis chapter 3, beginning in verse 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, oh, we may eat fruit from any trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, good for her, good for Adam, and was pleasing to the eye. It looked good to her. She knew it would look good to her husband. She took some of it and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. You see, Satan didn't come and say, Eve, Turn against God and worship me, worship Satan. What did he say? In essence, he was like, Eve, you do you. I hate that phrase. I hear it so much. You do you. Eve, don't focus on God. Focus on you. No, she didn't have a cell phone. She didn't have a camera. But I believe that was the first selfie ever taken. They were there. They were content. They were focused on God and God's provision and God's glory. And Satan said, but don't you think that would taste good? Don't you think that is attractive? Don't you think you could be wise like God? Just do you. And she did. That's the difference between the deceiver and Jesus, who, who, who tells the truth. And in fact, in John 10, 10, he says, the thief, Satan, the deceiver, comes only to steal, steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And you know what's so tricky is when he talks about the thief, the deceiver, has come to steal. He's telling the truth, but it's so tricky because it's the deceiver who appears not to be stealing, but to be offering a gift. But what is that gift that the destroyer, the thief, brings? A mirror. So we can just focus on ourselves. We can just look at ourselves. I knew a woman in the first church I served and she said that her mother taught her, if you want to spend your life being miserable, think about what other people ought to be doing for you. If you want to live a life filled with joy and contentment, spend all your time thinking about what you could be doing for other people. When we come to worship, how often do we say, oh, I hope they sing that hymn I like. Oh, I hope this happens. Oh, I hope that happens. All focused on what we want, what we like. Do we ever come thinking, oh, I just pray, Lord, you'll enable me to glorify you today. And Lord, if it be your will, give me a blessing that I might be a blessing to someone else who's there today. 
I was just thinking a little earlier, now I've got my phone and I've got it open to the camera app and notice right behind me is a cross. And if I turn, I'm gonna turn my uh, lapel mic on because I'm turning my back on this mic. If I turn my back to you and I face this cross, can you see that in my phone? There's a picture of the cross in my phone. So I'm here, but there's this little button on my phone that I can push. Now can you see what's in my phone? A picture of me. So I'm here in the pulpit. I'm standing before the cross, but I'm just focused on me, just me. I haven't moved, nothing's changed, but my perspective. Is it about the cross? Is it about God? Or is it all about me? The danger here is in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in, the la in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You know, we can prophesy, but if we prophesy so people will think wonderful things about us, then we're not glorifying God. We can cast out demons. We can do wonders. But if we're doing it focused on us, so people will lift us up and focus on us, then it's not worship, it's not about God, it's still all about us. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if a man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. Today, as we continue in this service of worship, we have the privilege, we have the opportunity to participate in the sacrament of communion. One of the most powerful examples of self-denial to the glory of God and to the benefit of God's kingdom. For we are going to be speaking on and focusing on this meal, but remember it was shortly after this meal that Jesus prayed, if it be possible, let this pass from me. But Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. As we come to this table, as we taste and see and recall the goodness of God, may we remember the self-denial, the self-sacrifice, the imagery of laying down one's life to the glory of God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow him. And Lord, the beauty of that, that he doesn't call us to do and go anywhere he hasn't been or do what he hasn't done, but rather follow him and his example of what it means to deny oneself and pick up the cross to the glory of God. Lord, as we do this today, may your Holy Spirit just 
awaken us to your presence. May this bread remind us and be made real to us as the sacrifice of Christ's body. And this cup to the sacrifice of God's blood. To your glory and that a way might be made for us, Lord, where previously there was no way. And as we consider that this life we have cost Jesus his life, might we dare to ask and acknowledge that it shall cost ours as well. Lord, give us the courage to pray that we might become broken bread and poured out wine to your glory and to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, as you're here and as you've joined us in worship, know that though we are happily a Presbyterian church and congregation and family, more importantly, we are brothers and sisters in Christ who acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so if you are here today, regardless of denomination or affiliation, if you acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are invited to come to this, the Lord's table, and taste and see that indeed he is good. For it was on the night of his arrest that Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. After having given thanks to God the Father, he took the bread and broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. In the same manner, likewise, taking the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink, all of you, doing so in remembrance of me. Today, as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, indeed, we bear witness to the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. you would take your communion cup and take out the wafer. Let us receive it together, the body of Christ broken for you. And now the cup. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But praise God, through the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, all is possible. The blood of Christ shed for you. Would you please join me now as we pray together the prayer. Christ taught his disciples to pray, praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Please stand as you're able and join us in our hymn of response. forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love. you my king would die for me amazing love I know it's true it's my joy to honor you in all I do I honor you As we recall the amazing provision of God, may we respond in faithfulness by bringing forth God's tithes and our offerings. Patiently, patiently have I waited for the Lord. Patiently. Patiently, patiently. 
seated. As we come before the Lord in prayer, I've uh, got a couple of things that I'd like to uh, share with you. I was informed this morning that uh, Dot Clark has uh, been moved to Hospice House in Bon Air. She's not uh, been receiving any nourishment by mouth for the past several days and just don't know how much longer she will be with us, but her family um, asks for prayers for her and for their family. Also, um, Jim Marston has gotten reports back that his lymph nodes are cancer free, which is wonderful. And he's still in the hospital, but they're making sure that he's going to do okay with the liquids. And if so, he uh, hopes to come home early this week. There are others that we should lift up in prayer today. Yes, and Teddy Martin. Teddy Martin's out of the hospital and is home. All right, let's come before the Lord in prayer. Gracious, merciful God, we rejoice in this day, Lord, who you are, who you call us and equip us to be. Lord, we pray that these gifts and offerings, these tithes, Lord, will be used in ways that Bring glory and honor to your name and work to the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we lift up those who have been listed by name and Lord, those whose names have remained silent but are ever more on our hearts. Lord, we rejoice that you already knew their names and you already know their needs, Lord. And we rejoice and praise you, Father, that you are already at work in those situations. But Lord, we ask that you would use us as hands and feet, as visible and physical representations of your invisible yet powerful presence and provision. Lord, we lift up all those who have served our country, who are veterans, all those who are still currently in service on the behalf of our country, for the ways they daily deny themselves for a larger and greater good to which we daily benefit. Lord, may we look upon their service and be reminded of how you call us to deny ourselves and pick up the cross and follow you. Father, all these things we pray and rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen. as you're able and join us for our sending him.
Wow, isn't it great to see the Holy Spirit at work? Like, how could we have had a better hymn than that just to tie everything together that, uh, that we've been focusing on today? Amen. It's just, uh, I heard someone say one time that uh, God breaks through in worship sometimes in spite of ourselves. So, amen. May we go from this place realizing what an awesome, awesome, amazing God we serve. And may our focus be always on that amazing God. Go in the assurance of the love of God the Father, in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and in the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.